Hello everyone, welcome to the beautiful city of Porto in Portugal. Portugal's second largest city and home to wonderful sights, smells, food, shopping. I'm here with my sister Ashley, my mother Linda. In today's episode, we're gonna show you the top 10 things to do in Porto. Some of them are things you might expect and others might be surprises, but we have been having the most glorious time from showing you some of the iconic blue and white azulejos tiles that are all over the beautiful buildings all over Porto, to going up and down the Douro, to even learning how to hand paint the blue and white tiles ourselves. This is going to be a real treat. We've also got some fabulous shopping adventures. I have on all of my blue and white jewelry, which actually isn't really mine. I'm just borrowing it before it goes on the Chateau Love website. If you like antique and vintage jewelry, art and gifts, make sure you check out that as well. In our last episode, my mother and I were having all sorts of fun. And as you know, we were on our way to see Ashley here in Porto, where she has been performing with her band, which is the Michael Bolton Band. And they just performed at the Douro Wine Festival. Yep. So an extraordinary time that you've had. And now we're all together and we get to have a little holiday and show you some of the lovely sights and sounds of Porto. They're not in France anymore, and we have come in search of the world's most beautiful hand-painted tiles. We're now in a place that I am so excited about. It is the train station here in Porto. It is a magnificent wonder. Come on, let's go see. Yellow ceiling with the blue and white tiles. It's so beautiful. And it's mixing in colored tiles as well. This place is astonishingly gorgeous. And I'm so inspired. The color tiles, all of it, it's incredible. about this place is that there are panels of the four seasons. We have spring and then summer. Over here, autumn. And then winter. And I love it whenever artists depict the four seasons, especially in individual panels. And these ones are incredible. Again, so much inspiration here to take back to the chateau. I would love your thoughts on what to paint next because this is just so, so, so lovely. And there are also gorgeous panels of artists and musicians. Look above your head right now. Oh, she's playing the oh, I love it. It's beautiful. Because we've got people traveling from distant lands. It's very beautiful. You could stand here for hours and, and just study these pictures. They're so intricate. Oh, yeah. And then these windows, look, they look just like the window in the staircase at our little chateau. They do. And it's the same colored glass as well because this was built in the exact same time period. So behind me we have not one but three of Porto's most iconic buildings. It's actually two churches side by side, but because churches are not ever meant to be side by side, much like sisters, <laughs> they built Porto's tiniest house right in the middle. So the church, there's the church on the left and then the church on the right some of Porto's most spectacular tiles alongside the right facade 
and Porto's tiniest house right in the very center. Porto's tiniest people, obviously. Someone very, very skinny. Yes. Not us after this trip. No. Says, so you thought I was making it up. It says Casa Escondida, hidden house. Hidden you house. might be right. I might be right. I, 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 love, I love these words. I find it impossible to believe, but today, what's the date today? You might be right. So just like a clock, <laughs> I can be right at least twice a twice day, a right? Day. <laughs> a broken clock. We are standing in front of the magnificent Porto Cathedral. And though the inside is meant to be very, very beautiful, I am most excited about seeing all of these exquisite hand-painted tiles that are everywhere. Let's go. Extraordinary, and it's incredible to think how old they are. It's wrong. It's kind of six six four. Four. Joy, but it's the wrong meter and some of the wrong notes. Because it's supposed to be da 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 and this is in 6-4 and they've got it. Da 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 Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. We're just nerding out. like a renaissance dance instead of a... But aren't the tiles pretty? The tiles are beautiful. <laughs> The Ode to Joy dance? Yeah. Show me what that looks like. <laughs> I can't take you two anywhere. <laughs> the streets of Porto are not safe with either of you. <laughs> well, if they're going to have Beethoven and Wagner out there, they should have classical music in there. I'm okay if they've got wine. <laughs> Is she really gonna go ask them? Probably. <laughs> they're closed though because it's gonna knock down their door. They're not closed. No, they've got a window open. <laughs> I'm gonna stick my head in here beside all the bottles of booze. Yeah, it's done. She said booze. Oh, you know what, Ashley? It makes me very happy. You've come off your tour and you are still carrying your Paris bag. Oh, I have dragged this bag around all over the world. I can't, I can't kill it. It's so cute. And it goes with everything. It's very Paris. It's la vie parisienne. And I have it packed full of all I, sorts of things when I'm finished. Oh, with and it. mom's wearing some of the jewelry. She's pinched a piece. It, it goes does. With the blue it and white beautiful. Has. It does go with the blue and white here. In Porto. Why don't you have a why don't you have your Portuguese tile bag? Why don't I have my I Portuguese tile bag? bag. <laughs> but mama, you can't keep it. That one's soon gonna be for sale on my website. Aww. I'll give I'll give you a discount though. <laughs> <laughs> Now 
Now we're going to do the activity that I have been most looking forward to on this whole trip. We're going to go learn how to paint traditional Portuguese tiles and not just anywhere, but in the most beautiful gardens here in Porto. These are the gardens of the Crystal Palace. Now, sadly, there is no longer anymore a Crystal Palace. It is a sports arena, quite a, quite a beautiful one, but these gardens are spectacular. For anyone who loves peacocks, we have a mama peacock, some pea chicks, and the handsome papa over there. <laughs> oh, it's like a beautiful grotto. perfect spot. So these are our tiles, unglazed. You ready, Mama? You're a little cool. You want this one? I'm ready. So Miguel Bombarda Street, and uh, they are all printed to be exactly the size of your tile. Now, in order to copy any of these designs, we don't need to like know how to draw or how to copy the design. Basically, you just place it on the tile, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever design you want to trace on there, you can basically trace it with a pencil, and the drawing will appear oh, okay. yes. directly on there. Okay. Also, it's always cool. possible to copy just part of a design and fill out the rest with uh, text, maybe your initials, dates, uh, greetings for somebody, you know, it's, it's possible to play around with it. For example, we have different shades of blue. It's the same color, but it's lighter or darker. So we can get these nuances and this range just by using one glaze and then kind of treating it as watercolor. The more pigment or the more layers you stack on top of whichever the darker it's going to be. Is it possible for me to do this in the bright yellow instead of the gold? Of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful, Mom. What I'm going to do is a combination. I'm going to stencil the outside and then I'm going to paint something inside inside the circle exactly yeah. changes into the blue the yeah. other colors stay the same so these are used almost like pastels yes but they can be fired in the kiln and see so it says cobalt blue on cobalt this one blue, yes wow and then so at what temperature do you fire everything goes to 1100 okay uh, so this is still considered to be low temperature glazes okay mama would you lift up your corner and see if it's going through Oh, look at that, it is. It's going through. I need to make it more even. Which was not so popular in in Europe. But because in Islam you cannot depict human form, you cannot depict uh, uh, like uh, animal form, plants, nothing. That's why they really uh, evolved in abstract and or ornamental arts. That's and so it's, interesting. It's still around. Shapes. It's, yeah, yeah, and it's still around. Like these for brick, they're built from this super porous stone that is, that oh, is everywhere. Oh, okay. And you needed to find a way to, to uh, stop the water from literally coming into your house. <laughs> That's so that's good why the tiles go on the outside. That's a good idea. That's in so interesting. You guys need to look at a house is covered in beautiful hand painted blue and white that. tiles. Do you think, so I'm, I'm done with my necklace. You want to see if I got all the lines on mine? I nor snorted nor to put so it's got it's got lead in it yeah let's try to be careful <laughs> it'll drive you crazy if you eat any of it <laughs> that's a nice contrasting I think I want I think I want to do the light blue and the dark blue and we have to know that we are like we're doing it handmade so we're gonna see a little bit of brush strokes yes not so uh, we're not printers we're humans yes. <laughs> right of course <laughs> but then it's still possible to um, go over the same spots there's also a cup with water. I'd love to have a, a guideline. Right. And, and you said <laughs> you guys are doing a great job. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm learning how. I'm learning a lot of what not to do. <laughs> well, I'm, that's I'm, that's that's I'm that's the first step in learning if, what to do. If there's okay, and it's a little bit more complex to work with. It's kind of more yeah. thicker. It's a little fussy. Yeah. It's a little fussy. Exactly. Well, chalky. Go slow. 
outwards okay, from you. the center outwards okay and then also you can try doing the the lines mm -hmm. yours looks really good see actually you're very uniform you're much more are you using the dark the dark blue so this is turn, going to turn out to be a cobalt blue of, eventually so she, you know she explained that the color changes completely once it's fired so this is actually going to be a light blue uh -huh. this is going to be a dark blue this is the light blue here as well and then there's actually going to be a, a kind of a dark purple color i'm going to use which ironically the whole thing looks like i'm using purple already but, but i'm not so one thing that's interesting is that if you go to the uh the delft the Delft factory, yes. or if you look at how faience is made in France, it's very similar to this. It's with these pigments that then change color in the kiln. So it's a bit of, it really is a bit of a mystery until it's fired what it's gonna look like. the big reveal of these tiles once they've been glazed and fired and shipped all the way to France. We're going to show you that at the end of this video. Look at that! Yes! But what will they look like when they're fired? <laughs> it was a really incredible experience. Yeah, I'm happy you like it. I hope you like it when it's done. I think, I think it's uh, like I'm very curious to see how yours is going to turn out. I'm curious too, and I think this is so far our favorite activity in Porto. My favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this library is incredibly stunning. However, there's a long line as a wait and it is extremely crowded inside. Look at all these people. So not for the faint hearted and not for people who don't love crowds. by Gustave Eiffel himself, so a little bit of Paris here in Porto. We're now going to do one of the most fun things to do here in Porto, which is take a river cruise on the Douro and see the six bridges in
wouldn't be a trip to Porto without wine and port tasting. And we are about to go to the world of wine, which is, as my sister just said, like Disneyland for wine tasting here in Portugal. It's, this is Porto's new cultural district. It's a fairly new area that's been built to celebrate all things wonderful about Porto. So there's wine, chocolate, history exhibits, and we're gonna go check it out in just a few minutes. Fabulous, and we are on the Gaia side. We have spectacular views. It's like a storybook, it's so beautiful. Are we ready for the wine experience? <laughs> Let's go. Worth it. Seems worth a buzz. This is undoubtedly one of the most interesting fountains I've ever seen. Now this is very interesting. Here we're seeing all of the different types of soil that exists for the production of wine. So this exhibit is fascinating because it's not just about Portuguese wine production, it's actually about global wine production. So for someone who lives in France, this is especially fascinating. Portugal has a very varied topography, so the differences of all of these different types of soil and landscapes mean that from Vino Verde to Madeira to Porto, Portugal is capable of growing all sorts of wonderful and very tasty wines, which I hope we get to taste as soon as we're done at this exhibit. Roll out of the barrel. Not playing. No. No, okay. I'm not playing. Have I have I incurred the grapes of Rod? No, you're doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm so grateful for you, to you for saying such nice things to me. Stop whining about it. Hey, I haven't had any wine yet. I can't whine until I've had some wine. Actually, you were joking when you called it the Disneyland of wine, but this is actually a little bit like a Disney reenactment of a village. This is pretty cute. With the little tiles. Look. This is adorable. Hey, Mom, it smells bad in here. <laughs> My crazy, crazy daughters. So we have finally reached the room where we learn how to taste wine. After this enormous exhibit about wine, I believe that we have worked up quite a thirst, wouldn't you say? All right, wait, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let's go. So, after we swirl our glass, we'll be able to feel the secondary and tertiary aromas. That's a little bit different, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I can understand, that's completely unresistible. But yeah, let's resist a little, okay? So actually here, <laughs> in the aromas of this glass, we get... I'm sorry, they need to be more excited to first. <laughs> Resist. So, we can see that this wine is actually very, very fruity. And something like pineapple and melon. Okay? Whenever you want, please taste your wine. Oh, thank goodness. <coughs> oh, uh, finally. <laughs> So actually, it's one of the most famous port wine cellars in Portugal. And they are Wiesenkron, Croft, and Taylors. Uh, Wiesenkron, Croft, Taylors, and Fulsi. Okay. So I really recommend you to go there. Support. Really nice. Look at the color. Okay. Beautiful mm. color. Okay. The last wine tasting was all right, but this is proper wine tasting here, with a view of Porto and our own private tent. Check it out. And also, I'm gonna be a little cheeky, although that guy was quite proud of his young and acidic wine, I'm looking for something a little bit older and more complex. <laughs> yes. Pick me, I'm older and more complex. You know who's I'm, even older and more complex I'm, I'm, still? I'm, I'm the oldest and the most complex. All right. 
What, what'd you say? Sweet, sweet and full bodied. Sweet and full bodied. I'm gonna maybe a little bitter. I'm gonna go with delicate and complex. Okay, you get to be delicate and complex. You get to be sweet and full bodied. Uh, um, am I just uh, tart and <laughs> tart and fruity? <laughs> And spicy, don't forget spicy. A little spicy. spicy. You're a little I'm spicy. I'm spicy on the finish. Spicy, yeah. spicy on the finish. <laughs> Obrigada. Diego is helping us. It's our tutor. Obrigada, Diego. No, your student, 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 student. Hey, how do you call? What do you call those tiles? How do you pronounce it? You can do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's harder than it looks, isn't it? It is. How do you say it? Azulejos. 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 I think it was a little different the way you said Azulejos. 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 If you're in Porto, the end, the end of the word will be sh. But yeah, yeah. Azulejos. 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 Stop making fun of my my Portuguese accent, Ashley. Ashley's making I, fun of mine I all the time. Not. not you can't just put zhuzhes on everything. I'm enjoying it though. I'm having a really good time. I'm basically speaking French and just adding a lot of zhuzh. Yeah. One of the nicest things about coming to Porto is that there are so many beautiful places to stay. You can choose between magnificent hotels like the Toral Palace with its extraordinary entrance hall, dome ceilings, and bedrooms that are simply to die for. Or the Yateman, which is across on the Gaia side and has some of the most spectacular views of the whole of Porto. You can also do what we have chosen to do as I'm traveling with my mother and my sister and we didn't want to be in separate rooms. We've rented a beautiful Airbnb in a marvelous old Art Deco building. This building is so pretty. It's covered with wonderful old hand-painted tiles. And we thought it was delightful having these great vases of flowers on the top of our buildings. And one of the most lovely things about these wonderful old quirky places is that they are full of gorgeous little design touches. So if you walk with us up the stairs, this is my favorite part. It's probably five meters tall and we have this glorious glass skylight situation going on all around us. And as you see behind me, a vast mural. This is a three meter tall mural, which is actually wallpaper that's been framed. This is a really simple design technique on a gorgeous green background. The color scheme in this whole apartment is such a lovely combination of green, burnt umber orange, white, soft green, and wood. And so we're really enjoying staying here. There is a very well-planned but simple kitchen, and we've noticed that most of the stuff in here has probably come from Ikea, and I'm guessing possibly the kitchen as well, but it's absolutely beautiful. And then we have two bedrooms, which has been perfect for us. Ashley and I are sharing one, and my mother has the other one. From the bedroom, we have this gorgeous big bathroom with, with a walk-in shower. So we are extremely comfortable here. This apartment also has these really clever touches like these gorgeous tiles. Of course, Porto is famous for all of its 
incredible tiles everywhere, the blue and white hand-painted tiles, but these tiles are the hand-molded tiles and they're inside. This is a really nice design feature. And I also really like all of these black moldings. How great is this? The sun has come out. It's awesome, it's beautiful. Yes, everyone is happy. The music's playing behind us. And check out those tiles. Obviously, we have to do some shopping as well. I love these soaps, they're so beautiful. And for more good shopping, we have an assortment of really interesting old antique stores lining the back streets near where we're staying. Okay, here we go. We are going into the Porto Velo antique store and I am extremely excited about this. We show a lot of French antiques, but everywhere we go in Europe, they're always a little bit different. And this is gonna be really exciting. I think you need that. There's a lot of spaceman going on there. You just bought beautiful things. And she's wrapping them up. You're gonna show me in the room? I will, I can't resist Lunch. buying hand-painted pottery from a lot of the places that I go, so I have quite a collection at home. Okay, show me, show me, show me. Oh, it's stunning. Oh, and it's the, the blue and white and yellow, little hints of green too. That's beautiful. I love those colors. And it's signed. I'm ready. And uh, what's this? These are two tiles that I got. I'm going to use this. This is a vintage tile that I'm just going to use as a trivet to Beautiful. put on my table. Like, it doesn't matter if my house is small or if I'm poor. The value of this home has to do with the guests that enter it. Oh, that's so sweet. That's Beautiful. what it. Beautiful. That's what it means to me. So I'm going to put it in a frame. And look at this great price I got. Woohoo! Well, Simon's gonna lose his mind because he loves kimonos and you and I have come vintage shopping and you have found the best kimono. I do too. And look at all of these kimonos over here. I'm gonna have to FaceTime him in a minute and buy one for him. You guys can have matching kimonos. Show me, show me. Pajamas for winter. Yeah, this place is great. Oh, I think she'll look really, really sexy in that. Some of these are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But the one you've got on looks great. Now we see another trip to Egypt. <laughs> In this beautiful gift store. And you guys know that everywhere I go, I love to collect beautiful handmade ornaments to celebrate where we've been. And then we sign our names on the back. I think we each need to get one of these. I'm gonna get one. Aren't they gorgeous? I'm gonna have to get a swallow. I'm gonna get a swallow. Oh, the swallow is so pretty. And this is a sardine, which is a symbol of Porto. Mm-hmm. The swallow is also, and then this is a heart. Oh, well, I don't know. It's Chateau Love. We might need a heart, but also- We might need a heart. But also the one that says Portugal on it is also really sweet. I think I might want that to remember our trip. I love him and I love this hand embroidered stuff. It's beautiful. I'm gonna get this one. It says, the love lives here. Your beauty is in your heart.
having here? I think it's called a Francesina. I'm saying it wrong, but it's the So, the Francesina is the most famous sandwich. So, so let's see. Let's see if you like it. Is it good? Mm. How's everybody's food? And pretty garlicky. Mine is pretty garlicky. Yes, it's so good. That's lovely. How's all these like silky soft? I don't know where you fit my last. It's your one first prize. It's the hour but when the sky is this color oh. and it's you've never heard of blue blue oh, yeah. it's this and the sky is a bright blue so pretty with your monastery against against you want us they know you do there is one way to ask them. I didn't take a word, not a single word to Kiss the girl. I guess. This is the best test. We provide the best. I told them, but we only live to serve. As the case of these delicious, don't believe me, as the case. They can sing, they can dance. After all, Miss, this is for us. The dinner here is never second best. Go on and fold your menu, be your clans, and then you'll be our guest. Be our guest, be our guest. That's probably it. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. It's really good. I'm not. <laughs> I am bursting with excitement because a package has just arrived from Portugal, from Porto, where we were painting our very own handmade azulejos, hand-painted Portuguese tiles. It's completely different from painting porcelain, which I do in the style of Sèvres and Limoges. And it's also completely different to the technique that I showed you a few episodes back of how to paint porcelain at home and fire it in your own oven. We do have an example of that tile here. This is a really good thing to do if you don't have glazes and kilns and everything else. But when we were in Porto, my mother and my sister and I thought it would be wonderful to actually make the real thing, to do the unglazed tile and to do it in the style of faience, which is something that we learned about when we visited Michel Boileau's studio, which was another episode, a few episodes back. That was so fascinating and his work was so incredible. And I'm hoping the tiles made it in one piece. Let's see what we've got in here and hopefully they came out okay. I love the fact that there are stamps of Portuguese footballers all over this package. It's great. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Look at these gorgeous, rich colors. Isn't that wonderful? And the shiny glaze on top. This is a really, really special tile. It's even got a little bit of the crackle in the glaze, like an old tile. This is so cool. Now, when we hold them up together, 
even though my tile that uh, could be fired in, an, in a conventional oven at home is still really pretty. You see, it's just a different finish. It's a completely different, a completely different uh, type of tile. So exciting. Wow, because she used different colors. Well done. So this one had more, a purp it looked like purples, um, but when in the firing, you see now we have totally different shades of blue. So when I hold them up together, Look at the differences. Isn't that incredible? Same size tiles, totally different, both very beautiful, and both done by two people that have never done this before, first time artists. This must mean that the last one is my tile. I really hope that this, I really hope this works out. Okay. It did work out, it did. Can you see it? So this is meant to be a younger version of my mother. Of course, that is a ubiquitous chateau. It's, it looks a little bit like our old chateau, a little bit like our new chateau, and a lot, a little bit like a lot of other fairy tale romantic castles under a big cedar of Lebanon, reading a book because she likes to read. And then here we have the traditional pattern that I chose to use. I think I'll definitely want to do this again. Now I have to learn how to do the glazing and the firing. And um, a lot of you have said that I need to get my own kiln. I think you might be right. It was a really big success. If you're in Porto, make sure to give this a try. This, I think, was the highlight of our trip. Thank you, Porto. It's been grand. Obrigada. Life will always be lovey.